I gotta say, I'm delighted with how this compact generator turned out. Now, previously we used compressed air to drive my turbine generator. But today, I'm on a different, more sucky mission that I think will actually outperform that generator significantly. If we start with a wheel here, this can serve as a tester rotor. And then if we take some of these strong neodymium magnets and stick these to the rotor, now we have a generator rotor. Secure it in place. Man, introduce a coil of copper wire near the spinning magnets. And then if we attach an LED, voila, we have a small generator. Now, of course, the LED flashes with each passing of the magnet by the coil. But we've done this before plenty on this channel, so let's get to the interesting part. This little turbine dude will allow us to power it by air. Of course, giving it a wee blow works nicely. And this is how my previous air-powered turbine generator worked, which was both fun and a little scary at full pelt. But its major drawback was that despite it having three inputs, I could only vary the electrical output in three large steps. And each step immediately started dropping output as the compressed air ran down. So today, I'm on a mission to make a generator that holds its voltage steady and is also continuously variable so that I can pick whatever voltage or output I want. So, meet Hetty. She's Henry the Hoover's big sister, and hopefully she doesn't have an appetite for Lego. So can we use Hetty's uh, smooth suction to power this generator? Well, bringing Hetty's nozzle to the turbine doesn't really seem to do much. The blades get sucked towards the nozzle, but they can't travel past it due to the drag of the air vacuum behind the blades. So what if we instead use a propeller? This little dude is tiny, but it's conveniently a similar size to Hetty's nozzle. Let's see, can we build some speed here? Well, it does take a while, but eventually we get just enough speed to generate enough to power the LED. This works, but it feels ridiculously inefficient. What if we use a bigger propeller? I'm gonna speed this up a little. And yeah, once again, it does work, but it took about as long as the smaller prop. Well then, can we increase the efficiency a little by directing more of the airflow over the prop blades? If I use a couple of these three-bladed propellers inside of this wind tunnel of sorts, do we get any better performance? Yeah, sorta. Now of course, I'm not directing the airflow particularly well here, and I'm sure I could bump the speed up much higher than the mid 400 RPMs, but I still suspect both the torque and the overall efficiency would be garbage. But I have another interesting idea here. These small Lego tunnel segments look like I can fit these small props inside, though I can't quite make them airtight. But this might still be good enough to create a focused wind tunnel for these tiny props. Once we secure them in place, we can see that it does help in focusing the airflow. And as luck would have it, these tunnel pieces almost perfectly fit Hetty's nozzle. Actually, I'm quite impressed with this. This is probably one of the most compact vacuum turbines I've seen, and surely this can be optimized further. Now let's see what speed we're getting. Hmm, it looks like we're topping out at about 5200 RPM. Not bad for such a tiny contraption. Now I know this is cheating, but I also wondered if making it more airtight with Bluetack would help to improve its speed. Yeah, it looks like not really though. But to be fair, I didn't do a great job. So this is a cool idea, I think. And with this reasonable torque and speed, this design likely has some great promise in an ultra compact vacuum turbine. But I still suspect a large bladed turbine will perform much better. Let me try sealing off this turbine from earlier a little better. If we can direct the airflow over it, I could see it generating quite some speed and torque. But as you can see here, I've done an absolutely awful job directing the flow of air over the blades. That just isn't working using Technic. So I guess we're gonna have to use some standard LEGO systems bricks. And I wanna get a good view of the turbine spinning, so we'll pop in a double walled window. Now, generally I prefer Technic, so I'm not the best brick builder, but I reckon we can still arrive at a reasonable design for this thing. Now we can pop in our four-bladed turbine, 
and I know I could make it more efficient by making the blades go all the way to the walls, but I also don't want to get my Lego totally chewed up by the friction. So I'm sacrificing a small bit of efficiency in order to make this more reliable, as I want it to run for quite a while. A catastrophic failure when you have heavy magnets spinning at speed is just not something I want to be afraid of here. And this hole here is where Hetty will suck from. And then on the other side, this is where the air inlet will pull air in, forcing the air over the blades of the turbine. We can control the amount of air through the inlet using this gate made of red lift arms. Alright, let's give this an early try. Of course, with no vacuum being generated, nothing happens. But if I move my hand over the roof, we get a small bit of vacuum pulling air over the turbine blades and generating some rotation. Well, now we know this works, let's give this thing a roof. And may as well make it look a little prettier. So now we have a smooth turbine and a controllable inlet. Let's give this a quick try. Oh man, that's a satisfying sound. And what if we add this wheel here to measure the speed? Interestingly, the speed causes the tire to expand slightly here. And when we measure, even at low speeds we get around 2000 RPM. And fully open we get a top speed of just over 10,000 RPM. Now, we certainly don't need this much speed on our magnets. So let's use a gear reduction from this small gear to this large gear. This gives us a 1 to 5 reduction, giving us some really nice torque. Then we want to fine control the air inlet. So these gears will allow us to do just that. And then this worm gear will allow us to lock the position in place, which we can now control with this wheel here. So how does she perform? We'll start by closing the inlet. And even with just a tiny opening, this turbine immediately springs into action. As we open the inlet, this turbine roars. And this isn't even full tilt yet. Okay, now we know that this works, what speed are we getting? With just a crack open, we're getting just over 1300 RPM. And then fully open, we get almost bang on 2000 RPM and a hell of a lot of torque. Next then, we need our beefy magnets. These guys are strong. And instead of a single phase generator using just two coils on either side of the magnets, I want this to be a three phase generator using three coils surrounding the magnet at 120 degrees from each other. So to do this, we'll use these circular beams onto which we can mount our coils with the magnet in the middle. These lift arms then will allow us to mount the magnets into the middle over here. And then we need to secure things a little more. So now we have our generator core. The coils then will mount at 120 degrees from the core. One on the side here, and another on the other side, which are positioned perpendicular to the magnet core. And one final core on top. There we go, now we have our three coils which will create a nice smooth three phase output. So let's introduce the engine to the generator. We'll want to make sure this joint is real secure. Alright, let's test this single coil by giving it a little lick. When we open the inlet, even at very low speeds, this is outputting a pretty significant voltage. Yep, pretty tasty already. So let's give it a real load. These high powered LEDs should do. And even at extremely slow speeds, these guys happily flash with the AC being produced as the magnet passes the coil. By the way, if you'd like to see more of these experiments with LEGO and technology, please feel free to like or subscribe. Cheers! So how about we try something a little beefier? 
This here is a 12 volt 10 watt bulb, and for this we'll likely need to get a higher speed on the generator. And here we go. We're starting to get a little glow. And if we crank it up, we get a nice high voltage to bring it up to a reasonable brightness. I just love the sound this thing makes. Man, so far the turbine is holding up really well. So, what about three of these guys? Can we produce enough current to run these? Yup, no problem at all. We can get all three of these bright as hell with only a single coil. And what voltage are we getting here? If I smooth the output with some capacitors and rectify the signal from AC to DC, now we can read the voltage with this little LED voltmeter. As you can see, we can stabilize the voltage wherever we want by just simply turning the wheel. I just find this so satisfying having this degree of control. And we're topping out at about 8 volts here with a single coil. Now I'm not pushing this to the fullest open position, and Hedy's only being used on our low setting here, as I just really don't need more power than this right now. Okay, so a single coil is clearly good. But let's wire up the remaining two to our three-phase full bridge rectifier. Now I'm interested to see what this can do with a 20 watt LED array. You can see that even without capacitors smoothing the output, because we have these three phases, the output is actually already very smooth now. Now this isn't quite full brightness for this chip, but it sure is pretty damn bright. When I turn this off, I could still see some bright spots in my vision for a while. And what voltages are we getting now? Well, even at low speeds, we're comfortably getting 11 volts. And we can push this quite a bit higher. <laughs> Damn, I love that sound. And still no failures. Now the question is, can we actually do something useful with this generator? Like maybe power my phone? Now I'm gonna go carefully here as I'm not regulating the voltage with a buck boost converter and I don't want to supply more than it can handle. Now I don't advise anyone do this at home unless you're actually willing to damage your phone. And voila, my phone is charging. I do suspect this would take quite a while to charge though. And what about this 20 watt ring light? When I turn it on, we can immediately hear some drag on the generator core. And when I bump up the output, the ring gets brighter and brighter. Now this actually produces quite a bit of light. Definitely enough to light a room reasonably well. And of course, when I close the inlet, the light dies. Now what about something else practical, like powering a radio? Now of course, vacuums are loud, so there's no point in running the radio with the vacuum. So we'll need to store some power in this 5.5 farad capacitor so that we can use it later. Now it might look small, but it actually stores over 1600 times more than this beefy capacitor here. So let's hook up this radio module. And we'll use this speaker I made out of Lego to listen to the radio module. But first, we'll need to store a bunch of energy in our beefy capacitor. Okay, this took about 60 seconds to bring us up to three volts. And then just under another minute or so to bring us up to 5 volts. Not bad for such a beefy cap. Then finally we can turn on our radio. And even with the radio running, and the voltmeter drawing a small current, this radio plays for a good 4 minutes or so, before the voltage drops below a usable level. Of course, our USB powered bonsai tree runs really nicely on this generator. I just love the colors on this thing. And using the same capacitor, we can run it for quite a while after turning off the generator. Now, while making and planning these contraptions, they're usually fun or interesting tests and behind the scenes insights that I'd love to share with some folks that are interested in this kind of thing. So, if you'd like to support my experiments and these videos, I've started a Patreon which I'll link just below. 
And eventually, I'd also like to offer better instructions and tutorials on how to make these things for yourselves. So if you'd like to join, please follow me on Patreon at Jamie's Brick Jams. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.